This video is sponsored by Tokyo Treat and Sakurako. We made food from the One Piece cookbook and we're gonna do it again. Let's eat more stuff. Let's make Japanese curry. Curry. Curry is clearly a popular food in the One Piece universe, making several appearances throughout the manga and anime, and who can blame them? After all, who can resist those fluffy vegetables covered in rich, savory sauce? I love all curries, but I do really enjoy the lighter, slightly sweeter taste of Japanese curry. I love how Indian and Thai curry super kicks you in the taste buds with heat and spices, but sometimes you just crave a warm hug from inside your stomach, and that's when Japanese curry hits the spot. In One Piece, we see curry appear several times, like when Sanji and Taijo made curry for the marines. And did you know that Brooke's favorite food is curry, according to Oda? Let's not forget about Luffy's original curry made of uncooked rice, bitter purplish thingies, fish bones, jam, and something that's slimy and light blue. Ugh. But the curry we're making today from the One Piece cookbook is Kokoro's Curry. Tom's Workers is the name of the shipbuilding company where the Straw Hat crew met Frankie and the Tom's Workers secretary Kokoro served home-cooked meals like her curry rice to the employees so they can eat around the table like a family. Now before we make this iconic Japanese dish, I want to talk about this video sponsor Tokyo Treat and Sakuroko. Tokyo Treat and Sakuroko are both monthly subscription snack boxes delivered straight from Japan to your door. Tokyo Treat is full of popular Japanese candy and snacks like ramen, ramune, and Japanese exclusive Kit Kat, and Sakuroko is a collection of authentic traditional Japanese snacks from Japan's local artisan snack makers. Both come with a different theme every month to keep things fresh and exciting. This month's theme for Tokyo Treat is Summer Matsuri, which is piled high with the most exclusive and flavorful snacks Japan's summer festivals have to offer, like this salty vanilla Pocky that's deliciously addictive and you can't go wrong with cookies and cream Kit Kat. With cookie chunks in it for that extra crunch. And for Sakuroko, this month's theme is Tea Time in Yokohama, a partnership with the Kanagawa government and local snack makers to introduce traditional Yokohama delights in this special Yokohama design box. You can find things like this chocolate bread that's nice and fluffy and would go great with tea, or this Kyoho grape jelly that's super refreshing. So if you want to experience Japanese culture through snacks, then grab yourself some Tokyo Treat for some popular Japanese snacks, or Sakuroko for traditional Japanese treats. Click the links in the description and you get some free extra snacks or items with your first order. Not only will you be supporting the channel, but more importantly, you'll have a bunch of snacks to try out. All right, now let's make the curry. We're gonna start off by cutting two chicken breasts into bite-sized pieces and season them with pepper and a teaspoon of salt. Then peel and roughly chop up two potatoes. And we're also going to peel and roughly chop up one carrot. We're going to cut this carrot rangiri style. This is a Japanese cutting technique in which you cut cylindrically shaped vegetables diagonally while rotating between cuts. This gives it a nice triangular bite-sized shape and apparently gives it more surface area to brown and absorbs seasonings and flavor faster. Let's also dice up one onion. And the cookbook also calls for one celery stalk diced up. I always get confused by this. Is this a stalk of celery? Or is this a stalk of celery? I think botanically speaking, the whole thing is the stalk and one stick is actually called a rib. But common sense is telling me that that's not what the recipe is calling for. So instead I'm going to be using one stalk of celery as in one single rib. Now in a pan, pour one tablespoon of vegetable oil and then add in two cloves of minced garlic and one knob of ginger peeled and grated. Fry those up in medium heat and when fragrant, add the onions and celery cooking until they soften. And then add half a tablespoon of honey and continue stir frying briefly until the mixture begins to brown. Then add in two more tablespoons of vegetable oil and lower the heat to low. Add in three tablespoons of flour and three tablespoons of curry powder and stir fry for about five minutes. Add in two tomatoes that are cut up into large pieces 
and fry for another two to three minutes, stirring occasionally. Once the tomatoes have kind of shed their fluid, add in about three cups of chicken stock in two to three parts and mix thoroughly each time. Then add bay leaves and one tablespoon of salt and simmer on low heat. In a separate pan, heat up about 10 grams of butter and then add in the seasoned chicken breasts Cook the chicken on medium heat until brown and then add the chicken into the main pot. In the same frying pan, heat up another 10 grams of butter and fry the potatoes and carrots. After a few minutes after the potato has browned and the surface has become translucent, add the potatoes and carrots into the main pot and simmer on low heat for 30 to 40 minutes, stirring occasionally until the mixture thickens. Season with another half teaspoon of salt, add half a tablespoon of garam masala powder, mix it up and turn off the heat. Now we just gotta make some rice, which is Zorro's favorite and also one of my favorites. Although I wish it helped me get shredded like Zorro. When making rice, I use jasmine rice and I usually do a one-to-one -one ratio of rice and water. I make sure to wash and rinse the rice several times some people do the finger trick to measure the water, but that never works for me because I have big hands and I end up overwatering the rice. For me, I always go with one-to-one -one rice to water, and that's the perfect consistency of rice for me. Serve rice on a plate and pour curry on top, and that's Kokoro's curry rice. Now let's dig in. I love the smell of curry, super fragrant and mouth-watering. Gonna start off with some chicken and rice, beautiful curry flavor, a bit stronger than I expected actually, which I don't mind at all. Loving the hint of sweetness from the onions, carrots, and honey. The chicken is well cooked and the consistency of the sauce is spot on and blends harmoniously with the rice. The potato and carrots were cooked perfectly and they feel like little curry clouds in your mouth, bursting with flavor with each bite. I don't know if the rangiri cut made a difference with the carrots, but I really like the triangular shape and makes for a better mouthfeel. When making Japanese curry, I usually just use the box mix since I always thought that was easier, but making it from scratch this way wasn't that much work. I think it would have been even way better if I freshly ground up the garam masala just like in the anime, but I think this recipe is a good middle ground and I think it's delicious and I can see myself making this more often. Now that I've made curry from scratch, who knows, maybe Sanji will take me in as a sous chef. 